Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1046. You've been warned. Hello, Manaka Tachi. This is Joy Girl. And I think you would agree with me that in any given circumstance, a straw hat isn't usually a very noteworthy item. A hat woven out of straw, which is great to keep you sun safe, but it isn't particularly iconic except in the context of One Piece. Because as we know, not only is the hat worn by our protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy, giving him the epithet Straw Hat Luffy, as well as the name of the crew, the Straw Hat Pirates, but also, so we know that the straw hat is meaningful for a number of reasons, and more interestingly, as will be the subject of this discussion, the straw hat seems to become more and more mysterious, especially when we consider all the One Piece characters throughout its history that seem to have donned the straw hat. But before we delve into the super deep and meaningful lore of hats, please, let me remind you of the deep and meaningful lore of the subscribe button. Like the straw hat, it may at first seem insignificant, but its importance is actually multiple and varied. Most importantly, making sure that you're subscribed will mean that you get notified of the regular One Piece discussions that I provide on this channel. And also, it makes me feel very warm and nice and fuzzy, which I'm sure is the feeling that Luffy experienced when he first received the straw hat. So please, do subscribe and we shall carry on with our discussion. Since chapter 1, the real significance behind the straw hat was the fact that it was given to Luffy by Shanks. It was a symbol of friendship between the pirate and the soon-to-be pirate, as well as containing the promise that Luffy would one day surpass Shanks and become the Pirate King. And so we knew from the very first chapter how much this hat meant for Luffy. And in fact, one of the earliest arcs in the series, Orange Town, which was centered around the theme of treasure and what treasure means for different people, it was established in that arc that for Luffy, his straw hat was his treasure. And so since the very beginning, the hat has been used as a very important and meaningful element or symbol throughout the series. At times used to represent Luffy's trust in his friends, his determination, or the promises that he makes to others. But then surprisingly in chapter 603, it was revealed that the straw hat once previously belonged to Goldie Roger. And so from this, we could infer what Shanks meant when he said that the hat was very special to him, because obviously it was a keepsake from his former beloved captain. And so from this, the straw hat became representative of another very important theme, the idea of inherited will. And on that note of inherited will, a very intriguing question pops up for me. How did Roger obtain the straw hat? You know, where did he get it from or from whom? And I suppose this only becomes a bigger question because of another revelation that we received much later in the series, all the way in chapter 906, which was the fact that the straw hat that has been passed down from Roger to Luffy is not the only existence of that straw hat in the world of One Piece. Because obviously, we now know that a giant replica exists and is preserved in the freezing chamber within Marajoie. And with this information, the source and origins of Roger's straw hat becomes a source of real fascination and intrigue for me. Because before the knowledge of the existence of the giant straw hat, it was quite simple to understand and interpret Luffy's straw hat as the symbol of inherited will and friendship and promises and so on. You know, it was a quite seemingly insignificant artifact that was once previously owned by Roger and something that only began to adopt greater and deeper meaning as it became passed down between generations. But then with the revelation of the giant straw hat at Marajoie, the straw hat now takes on new meanings or at least poses new mysteries. The fact that it was introduced to us alongside Imu, a previously unknown character who also happened to be carrying a bunch of bounty posters of some significant individuals, including Luffy, and the fact that Imu's also been portrayed to us as an extremely influential individual in the series, most likely to be the real head of the world government, there has been a lot of speculations as to what all of this means. But the idea that is most commonly thought or accepted is that the giant straw hat at Marajoie probably belonged to Joy Boy centuries ago, and that's the reason why it's been kept and preserved carefully in that freezing room. And the developments that we've witnessed recently, such as the fact that Luffy has been now recognized as Joy Boy and has also unlocked powers that allows him to gigantify himself, and also the fact that the gigantic elephant Zunisha was a member of Joy Boy's crew, these are all 
taken to be hints or bits of evidence that supports the theory that the giant hat belonged to the previous, presumably giant Joy Boy. And on one hand, all this does is further cement the idea and the theme of inherited will. Luffy has not only inherited the will of the former Pirate King, but his inheritance of Joy Boy's will is further symbolized through the shared straw hat. But then also, ever since the reveal of the giant straw hat, I've been wondering what this means for Roger. And you could say that the theme of inherited will obviously applies to more individuals than just Luffy. The fact that Goldie Roger also inherited the will of Joy Boy isn't that hard to see. You know, he is another member of the D-Clan after all, and ultimately he was the one to reach Love Tale and find the One Piece. In fact, the only character in the series who is known to have done so. And it is also suggested that the reason why Roger couldn't be the next reification of Joy Boy himself was simply because he was too early. So again, on one hand, the fact that Roger somehow got a hold of the straw hat makes sense to the extent that it symbolizes this inherited will. But the question still remains, if Joy Boy's original hat is supposedly the one that is being preserved at Marijoie, how did Roger get a hold of his? And I suppose this relates to another question that I've also always been curious about. How and why did Roger become a pirate? Going back to chapter 603, where we see Roger invite Rayleigh to join his crew, the words he uses are, let's turn the world upside down, which I can't help but feel are very specific words that implies Roger's intentions to change the world. Sure, he might have innocently meant that he intended to shock the world by becoming a great pirate, but it is worth noting that his dialogue is awfully similar to other words or phrases that have been used throughout the series. You know, such as the D-Clan being known to turn the world upside down or cause a great storm, or phrases that have been used in direct reference to Luffy in bringing about a new dawn or bringing about a new era. So this line had always made me feel that Roger may already have had a hint about all the secrets and the mysteries and the deep lore that is to be uncovered in the world. Although in saying that, it did seem like in Odin's flashback that Roger was just interested in the great treasures that was said to be hidden on the final island. A working speculation of mine is that Roger actually formed his crew after the God Valley incident and became interested in uncovering the true treasures of the world after encountering Roxy Zebek. We know that Zebek had some knowledge of the world's secrets, and I have discussed in the past that he may not be the evil guy that the world government paints him out to be. And given Rayleigh's dialogue at Sarbodi when he said that the truth of the world and the secrets and finding the One Piece may be interpreted differently by different people, I've long wondered whether Rox uncovered the world's secrets or came very close to, and this led him down a very dark path. And maybe he even hinted at a part of this to Roger at God Valley, and this is what sparked Roger's journey. You know, maybe this is even where Roger first encountered his straw hat. Now, obviously, this remains very loose speculation because it's not even clear whether this fits the timeline or not. I mean, we know that the God Valley incident occurred 38 years ago, but we don't know when Roger formed his crew. It seems to be widely presumed that the Roger pirates were present at God Valley. And I mean, understandably so, it's hard to imagine that just Roger and Garp alone would have been enough to take on Rox and his crew, but we really just don't know for sure at this point. And in any case, I suppose the straw hat could just symbolize inherited will and not mean anything particular for Roger from his perspective, it could be similar to how Luffy consumed his devil fruit. Because although in reality there were a lot of things at play, for Luffy and from his perspective, he was hungry and there was a fruit, so he ate it. And in Roger's case, he may have just found a hat that he liked the look of, not realizing its full significance or the things that it symbolized, or even how how the hat made its way to Roger. But that explanation still doesn't negate the curious existence of the two almost identical straw hats in the One Piece world. I mean, for one, it raises the question as to whether there were other individuals who also donned the straw hat as similarly, you know, would be, could be Joy Boys who were simply too early, as well as raising questions as to its possible connections to other hats that have also been made of straw 
that we've seen in the series. I mean, the Kaza hat that was made by Ace and given to Oz Jr., that seems to be now fully explained. Apart from the friendship that it represented between the two white beard pirates, we now know how it also represents Ace's friendship to Tama. But then hats and giants seems to be almost the recurring motif throughout the series. Because I've also always wondered about the hat that the Yeti Cool brothers wore. Because those hats to me always seemed awfully similar to the straw hat, although it wasn't very clear because obviously we never got a very clear look at the Yeti Cool brothers. So maybe they weren't straw hats or anything similar to straw hats, but also maybe they were. Which then again raises the question as to whether there are really multiple straw hats in the series. I mean, for example, are they just another symbol for the D-Clan? Especially when you look at the shape, when you put it sideways. But then you'd have to wonder why has it only become an important symbol and something that's recognized with Luffy? Or is it just another artifact that the world government has expunged from history? And I suppose at this point, we're just gonna have to wait to find out the answer. But it really speaks to Oda's storytelling that something as seemingly benign as a straw hat has become a source for such interest and mystery in the world of One Piece. But anyways, those are just some of the thoughts and speculations and questions that I've had in my mind. I'd love to hear what you guys think, so let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you'd like more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a patron member. And I want to thank all our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.